Hey, welcome back to my channel, Growing with Grace from the Garden to the Jars. And this is the part two of our fall preparation. Um, if you haven't seen part one, um, please go back and uh, watch that video. I've been told by several people, it was a pretty relaxing video to watch. So part uh, two here, we'll be talking about uh, getting the animals all ready for winter. Now I will warn you that when I walked into the chicken coop, I did have a surprise that morning for me and um, it was sad on my part, but that's, that's part of taking care of animals. All right, let's get started. Always sounds so peaceful in the morning hearing the birds. Here we have, I have to uh, go in and uh, get the feed ready for the birds before I let them out. If not, they'll trampede you. <laughs> and you'll never be able to walk around them because they're all over, around your feet. It was cold that morning. I had a bunch of scraps from uh, all the apple peels and everything like that that I gave them. Now I do have also other food for them, like some chicken feed, but those were the scraps. I'm not going to get ready here and walk around and uh, let the chickens out. you notice look how quiet all the ducks are nobody's moving but wait till I open up that door for the chickens and watch everybody Oh, here we go you always get that one that wants to stop at the door and not let everybody out I also have some, I made some pizza dough and for some reason it's stuck to the pan. So that's what they're eating also. Oh, them geese. Now the whole bird yard is woke up. Now I have the lawnmower here. I have the my trailer hooked up to it and I just because I'm cleaning I load up everything in the lawnmower that I think I would be able to use and then any trash or anything I need to take back I put in the lawnmower. That way I'm not walking back and forth all the time. You know, there's Sassy back there with her cone on her head. We call her cone head. <laughs> I would let her in the gate, but she would come in and do nothing but eat all the chicken poop and everything and duck poop and then go in the house and throw it up. So she has to stay outside.
that blue trailer you see back there, we took that and traded in, uh, traded in. We um, tr um, did a made a, a camper out of it, and I do have a video on that, how we uh, took uh, the insides of it and put carpet and finished the walls up. Next spring, we're putting uh, camper windows in it. We're going to replace this building next spring. We're going to build them a new one. Over the years of all the straw has built up and it's kind of getting very hard for me to get underneath it. Plus it don't help that I'm getting older too. Which I'm still doing great but just a lot easier. You don't have to bend halfway over and walk in there to do stuff. We're going to tear it down and burn it and then take a uh, scoop up all the good stuff that's in it and put it over the garden. That's about five years of uh, collection of uh, straw and all kinds of stuff. Chicken poop duck poop. So some pretty good fertilizer in there. We'll make some good use out of it. It's so cold. I hate working in coats. It's bulky. But it's cold out there. I usually check for eggs and stuff with the pitchfork before I lay down fresh stuff. Make sure there's nothing in there that the chickens, I know there's no dead chickens because I always count them at night, make sure they're all in. Now I'll spread it a little bit inside, but the chickens would do the rest. Gives them something to do. Now throughout the winter, oh, I'm going to say once a month, I'll put a, a little, another layer of straw in there because they pack it down and poop in it, and, but the straw does keep it pretty clean. Pretty soon this is going to be full of chickens. I think they're already coming now. Not only that it's cold, it was windy too. If you notice the size of that wheelbarrow, that's been nice. I've had that for 12 years now. It's still in good shape. Yeah, see I had to bend over there and get down low. My next one's gonna be taller. Now behind those, that coop, I might, uh, maybe later on in the video here, it might show it on the other side of the coop. That has four stalls in it, and I have a fence dividing half of it. So that way the geese on the other side of the fence has a place for shelter, and then the ducks and everybody has shelter for this place. I have to separate the fences, or separate the, the, um, sh uh, the, Well, what do you call that thing there? Their uh, shelter. Because if not, uh, in the spring, when the geese start laying eggs, they won't let the uh, any of the birds in. See how hard it is to get out? <laughs> yeah, I still got it for my age. <laughs>
again the chickens will go in and and usually the first week I'll have to go and scrape the straw back in because that's pretty deep back in there but they'll still spread it all out for me now here I'm going on the other side of the fence where I have it separate in the middle because of the geese if you notice I was telling you if you look in the back I have a window back there and I have two windows so actually there's four sections to this building here and half of it is the chickens the geese and the other or chickens and the ducks and the other half is the geese now that string I just showed you there I have to make sure all strings are picked up because they will the chickens will start eating it and just keep going with it but you see that little window back there in the summer I keep it open so air can flow through because it forms like a tunnel of air for the uh, animals to go in shelter from the Sun but now I haven't showed it here because I have to get plastic but that window I will frame it in I put plastic up so that way the Sun will come through and then it keeps it warm in there also in the winter now the chickens in the winter time I'll make a pathway from the door that they come out I'll make a pathway all the way over to the shelter and then they'll spend the days inside that shelter because that Sun comes through that window but again, I'll keep it covered for winter time. They're already going to start. I'm surprised there's not more than just one in there right now. <laughs> Look at all the dust. From that straw. Now the shelter on this side where the geese are, they don't use that shelter very much. I don't put a whole lot down. It'd be below zero degrees and they'll be out there in the snow facing the wind and with their heads all tucked back in and like I said, they you would think they've used the shelter, but they don't. But the duck and geese have access through that wire there. You see that cattle panel to the left? And um, they are able to go, the, the, the female ducks are able to go in and out, but the male ducks can't. They're too big to go through the hole because I have a couple male ducks and they'll fight, and that way I can keep them separated. But they'll, they'll come over in the winter time and lay in there. But when it comes time, mating time for the geese, and they start laying eggs, then I have a couple that go in there, and then they won't let anybody in. Here is uh, Big Daddy's pen and, uh, and his uh, girlfriend. When uh, we've had him... We probably had these geese for about 10 years, and I don't know really how old they are and who, how long the other owners had them, but Big Daddy was the, the, main, the main man, you know, over the other male ducks. As he got older, um, then they, you know, it was time to tell him, hey, you know what, you're old, you get, get back behind the flock now, <laughs> so the order. So these uh, other male ducks, they all fought for the position of being the main man. And he lost, of course. And so because of that, they'll pick on him because he's still trying to show him that, hey, I'm more powerful than you. And uh, so I separated them. And even the separation between a fence, not this fence here, the other fence, they still fought through that fence. And then they'd tear their faces up through the fences. They didn't care. So I had to move that injured duck that I kept in this here um, house that you see here. 
I moved him over into the broiler house and moved Big Daddy and his girlfriend in here. And it's been peaceful. Oh, all day long. When they were between the fences, they fought. Just, they're, they're terrible. Now, I had uh, my Amish neighbor build me this building here. And if you notice, there's some fans in the background there. Once I get my big butt out of the way there. <laughs> there we go. Um, the fans, uh, in the summertime, we would uh, run those fans and draw the heat out. And then uh, that was facing the south here, so the wind would go through. And if it got real hot, they, they'd go in there for shelter, and it really stayed cool for them. I keep their food in there. But they hardly ever go in the shelter. Now, the his girlfriend would go in the shelter. Then here with the pool, um, it's a big pool. And uh, my husband put a plug on it down here that you put in them coolers that you can replace. And that worked out really great. So we'll drain that. It'll drain it all down to about two inches. And then after two inches, um, the... Uh, you have to take a five gallon bucket and take a few scoops of it out with the water before you can actually lift it and dump it. Now I'll bring their water bucket over here by the door because I have the electric outlet inside in the for the heater here. Right now I'm just seeing how far it reaches before I clean it out make sure that's the spot I want it in. Then I'll place it like up on the the wood there because they dig around, especially in the winter time. They'll dig holes all around the bucket and then take all the mud and put it inside the bucket. And then I'm constantly changing that water out. And so this way, by putting it up on that wooden deck, they can't do that. All right, now they see that that's going to work, then I'll just go clean out that bucket. And on the, the side over to the left of that building is two great big windows that um, we'll, we can uh, pull it up. It's on hinges, can pull it up and I have it supported with chains and it's tall enough to where the geese can walk back and forth under it also. So in the summertime, like I said, there's plenty of air flow. And then I got some blinds on the front. Sometime in the summertime, when the sun comes through, I'll close that top window. There's two separate doors there. I'll close that top door and pull the blind down and it'll help keep the sun from going in. That building you see to the right, the brown building, um, that's a shed. It is 10 foot wide and 20 foot long. Me and my husband built that. And then the roof of it, um, half of the, oh, I don't know what you call that, that tin roof, half of it's clear. Like I alternate it, brown clear, brown clear. That way the sun can come through and keep it warm in there in the uh, winter time form. My dad's 90 years old, and uh, he come to live with us. This would be his fourth winter here with us. And after my mom passed away, uh, he, he does everything. He builds birdhouses. He works on his own equipment. He's 90 years old. Oh, I'm going to change the subject here. See that spout to the, to the right going down over the pool? Um, that shed over there has a... Um, a uh, gutter and all the rain will run down into that pool and keep that water pretty fresh. I still got to change it. But now when winter comes, when I'll remove the pool, then we'll have to take that gutter and uh, put it back into the main spout that goes out into the creek. Now the other gutters around the, uh, around the chicken coop and stuff, 
I got it going out into the yard, into the pond, just like I did with the, uh, oh, around the house. All the gutters around the house, they go down the, the water, when they go down the spout there, we have lines and out into, go directly right into the pond. So no water drains even around our house. It all goes right out into the pond. I said I'll put that bucket there on top of that. If you notice, there's a blind on that. That blind keeps the sun from coming in. And then here, that was Big Daddy, guys. Now I'm showing you the water. This is how I show you how we got the water set up for Ova. It goes up in, on top of the chicken coop. There's a reason for that, and, uh, and I'll show you at the end of the video why that's like that. That brick's tight up there, so it's not coming down. <laughs> then the outlet there, you'll see where there's a black, um, that, that's kind of like a, a container that you, uh, when you carry out containers with the clear lids on top, so I will take that container. I have to replace it. My dad broke it, but I have to replace that container. So anywhere the outlets connect, I will um, put that plastic container, that lid over and snap it shut and it keeps it waterproof. Now, if you notice the uh, board there, which I'll show you here, right there going across, I had to have my husband put that across because I'm darn chick or ducks, they use it as a bath tub. So that keeps them from um, going into their drinking water. Now the other tub I'm cleaning, which you can't see here right now, I might, let me see what we got here. Oh, here we go, yeah. Now that one I'll fill it up and I will put um, a little heater in it and that one, the ducks will get in it and uh, they will actually, the male ducks, cause the ones that can't get through the fence hole. So they'll use that to bath in, in the winter time or even in the summer too. That way they have water too. Now in the summer, I have another big pool like Big Daddy's for them to go in. But with winter coming, I have to put them big pools away cause they'll freeze and then they'll, they'll crack the plastic. So this tub here works out pretty good for them. As you see here, well, the wind's starting to pick up. You can hear it through the mic. I see some dark snow clouds coming. I was having a hard time getting the outlets in. I'll have to have uh, my husband, Hoss, or Greg, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> the man who appears in my videos. <laughs> He'll have to push him in for me. That's the uh, electric that I got going up and wrapped around and then it uh, hooks inside the uh, Big Daddy's house. Yep, you can see the snow coming. I knew something was coming. Then we'll put those uh, water heater things in these, those also. Now later on, I'll show you how I take uh, some clips and uh, or zip ties and uh, I'll, I'll put the cords up with them against the fence. I got some uh, branches hanging out here. I got to trim them down because when the winter comes, the snow hits them and weighs them down. And I don't, the, for some reason, the ducks don't seem to see them without the leaves on them. And I don't want them to poke their eyes out. Okay, now it's getting cold. <laughs> kind of cold on the head, especially when you are got your hair thinning on top. My hair thins on top in the winter time. Then when summer comes, it uh, grows back. trying to find a level spot. I need to go get a rake and level that out the next time we come out.
Now when winter's here, I will go out and uh, change the water in the mornings and then go back out. Oh, I'm gonna say around two o'clock and change it again. Because again, the ducks even dig down in around the bowls and then throws the wood chips and stuff. And if you notice the wood chips all around, I always have wood chips put down real thick. The wood chips uh, keeps it from getting muddy. And then uh, after they uh, poop on it and everything, and then when it rains, it washes it down through. So it really keeps the area cleaned up really good. <laughs> There they are, got to play in the mud. You got to be careful because they will bite. They'll grab you, twist, and pull. <laughs> Tear his skin. That's what I was talking about. You got to scoop still some water because it's still a little heavy, but just that little bit of water helps. Again, that downspout will um, turn it and uh, go back the other way, and we have a... Um, Oh, I don't know what you want to call it that my dad put in to put the, to drain it so it runs out into the creek. Now I'll go back later after that drains and I'll lay some straw down in it. It'll help keep some of the mud under control. I'll rinse this all out and then I'll store it away for winter. I already took care of the, the ducks when I did theirs earlier. Oh, just so future, around the edge of that pool is slippery. And one day I came out and seen a chicken in the water. So chickens can't swim. I was just standing there. So what happens, they jump up on the sides and it's slippery, then they fall in. So what I did, you got the pool noodles for your swimming pool. You take those noodles and cut one side off and then wrap it around the edge of it. That way, if the chickens are there, they got something to grab onto. This is how we uh, drain the uh, water after we're done. So that's, we have it flipped up over the top of the roof and down on the other side. And, and uh, I usually walk it out and drain the hose. That way it doesn't freeze up. And I don't have to worry about carrying buckets of water. Actually, I do it two times. What we're doing here, this is the broiler house where we kept the meat birds. But I have a, the uh, injured duck moved over to here. And that big heavy canopy was extended out into the yard for shelter for the broilers. But in the winter time, um, if you look real close, you'll see like uh, some black netting. That goes over the whole thing so that way the hawks don't get our birds. What's really funny is when they dive bomb to get them, they hit that net and fling off. <laughs> so, wish I could catch that on video. So that protects them. So what we're doing is um, we're gonna be rolling this up for the winter and putting uh, clamps on the ends and everything. Then when next spring comes, when I get the broilers, I'll bring it all back down again. Greg's on the inside. I know there's a lot of work when you're homesteading and raising your own food. It's time consuming, but it's really nice to go to the grocery store and, and uh, like I said, here in this pen, I raise 40 meat birds twice a year. One real early in the spring and one toward the fall. I tried to avoid the midsummer with the meat birds because it gets too hot for them. But like I said, it's a lot of work. And oh, the, in the background, changing the subject. 
I was telling you that I'd be doing a video with my father in the barn that we uh, built for him, made into a home. That's that little gray building there. That that would be in a future video. So make sure you guys hit the bell so that way you know any upcoming um, videos I have out. He's an interesting one <laughs> for 90. Oh, I started to tell you about the, uh, I get sidetracked here, um, about all the work it is here. And, but it's nice to go to the grocery store for actual food. My bill is like maybe $10 a week. That's all it costs me to eat. Because I, like I said, I do raise my own meat birds and my own uh, pork and my, my, the pork and the cow, my neighbor, he uh, does that for me. Because I'm, I don't have the right amount of land that the law requires. So I'm going to say I probably don't spend any more than, I'm going to say $60. Eat That's high at the most in a grocery bill. And again, that's stuff like, you know, flour and sugar, stuff I can't. But now I do make my own uh, ketchup and my own mustard and my own condiments. And now I will buy... Um, Hellman's mayonnaise. I like their mayonnaise. I can't. That's I do like that. only uh, take it up that far the reason why we don't take it all the way to the top we do have air ventilation up in the roof part of it I do stuff it with insulation to keep the air from going through but it also helps with the tarp to stop the air also especially with the uh, now the 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 top door there there's two we cut the door in half there's two doors there top and a bottom we'll leave the bottom open for the duck to go in and out and the top of it we will keep closed for the winter time well we summertime we keep it open because it keeps it cooler in there and we just clamp everything up with the clamps until summer comes works out really good if you notice in the back there, you'll see the black drain pipe that goes down. In the back of this um, chicken coop, boiler house, whatever, there is a, um, oh, a gutter, a downspout and stuff. And uh, so that water goes down. And in the uh, wintertime, it goes down and then it has another tube. Then it takes it out into the chicken yard and out into the pond. Then in the summertime, if you see the white barrel in the background there, 55-gallon barrel, summertime we'll disconnect that and put that in that barrel. That way I've got rainwater to water my um, raised uh, flower bed over there. Now this is uh, the back of the chicken, uh, the broiler house. And we have a tarp going across that, so in the winter or summertime, uh, it keeps it shaded for them. And then we'll roll this up too, like we did the front. Now, if you notice, there's some um, swimming pool noodles on the fence. When we have the tarp over the fence, if you don't have the noodles, the wind will eventually put holes in the tarp. So the noodles keeps uh, it smooth all the way across the, the tarp. So it doesn't get punctured.
now that we got the Mr. Duck's uh, housing all set up, now what we need to do is get him and put him inside. That way he knows he can go inside and that's where his food and water is. Then eventually he'll come out. It's usually hard to catch these guys. Oh, I can't believe he went right up in there. That that never happens. <laughs> now he'll stay warm. He's the one that got uh, hurt. I had it in a previous video where he's an older one and the younger male ducks. They, they like to go after the old ones and say, hey, look, I'm the boss now. You're not. And then he got hurt and... So that's why we keep him separated. There he is. He's all in. Probably thinking, where am I at? But at least he's warm. He's got his food and his water. And he can come in and out. And like I said, we'll close the top door. I'll go back to um, what I was telling you about uh, uh, clamping up the hoses. I use zip ties. And uh, I put the zip ties up. That's from where those heaters are in the water. Because in the winter time when it snows, the um, snow will get on the cords and then the ducks play in the water and then it freezes the cords down in the water. So if we zip tie them up, then that don't happen. And then again, on all the outlets, I will use that uh, takeaway container that I told you for food and cover those outlets up with that. It's that black thing there, but it has a clear lid to it. That one just got broke. I got to replace them. And I make sure it's free to move back and right, forth if we need to. Now I'm going to unload the trailer. That's why I take the trailer back there. That way I'm not walking back and forth. So I put everything that needs to be put away, put it in that trailer, and then bring it up here and then put everything away. Now later on, I'll go in and then I'll get the shed all straightened up on another day. Now I'm going to um, now I got the trailer unloaded. I'm going to go ahead and um, put the trailer away and put the lawnmower away. And then I'm done. A few things to finish up. My chickens, when they get old, um, I like to provide comfort for them, and so I always put a heat lamp on and so they can stay warm. And I keep food and water close by. She was able, I think she started this summer, I noticed her old age catching up with her. Their tails start drooping. That's how you can tell when their life is about a week away from ending. Their tail starts drooping like what you see here in the picture. And uh, she was outside the last couple days, but then um, I put the heat lamp on and now she stays inside. And I keep an eye on her, make sure the other birds don't peck her. 
because they like to stay within their flock even toward their death. Gives them comfort. You can usually tell when a chicken is um, toward the end of their life, usually about a week before they pass. Um, if you notice her tail is all sloped down and stuff and um, she had been like that way for about a week and that's how I know when they're about ready so I'll keep an eye on them so she's um, been inside for about a day underneath the heat lamp I went in to check on my chicken and um, see how she was doing and I found her laying there so I picked her up and put her in a blanket so she can keep warm and pass quietly I'm sorry if this bothers you, but it does me. I care for every one of them, but she's comfortable. Okay, what I'm doing here, this is the other side of the chicken coop where I showed you the water hose goes up over the roof. So this is the part where we connect it to the uh, well. So I drain it out, and then that way there's no water in the lines, and they can't freeze in the winter, and then they're ready to go again. So Sassy's like, okay, I've had enough out here. I'm cold. Let's go in. <laughs> I did have a blanket for her to uh, lay on while she's out here. She likes to stay out here with us, and she'll go in the house and now sleep. What I'm doing here, I have some um, rebar to keep uh, the gates closed. That way, if an uh, animal on the outside jumps up against it, they won't be able to go through it. All right, there she goes. <laughs> Okay, now it's time to clean the dog kennel out. Um, we have the dog's um, kennel underneath um, two huge, large maple trees. So it's kind of hard to keep the dog um, poop up out of the yard. That's what's <laughs> being blunt here. And uh, if you notice, uh, you'll see Sassy. She has a cone on her head, and uh, I have medicine that I have to put on her paws and stuff, so it keeps her from licking it off. And uh, so what we do, instead of rake him, we, because it's pretty thick as you can see, we leaf blow. And uh, we have a tarp down in the corner and we blow it all on the tarp. And if you see Zach over there, he doesn't want to move off the tarp. He doesn't care. And uh, so, well, now the tarp's being blown up. Okay, what we're doing here, um, I, once all the leaves are on the tarp, we fold it up so we kind of enclose the leaves in the tarp here. And uh, then what we'll do, we'll drag this tarp out of the gate here and, and then into the garden. Poor Sassy, she, uh, got, I hate to see her wearing that cone on her head, but... My, cousin, my husband, he's always got a joke about something, so he calls her Conehead. He's got a name for every one of our animals, other than the real names. I think I should, like, give him a name, too. <laughs> so, then our goal here is to get this out without the dogs escaping. Especially that one right there, Zach, the little one. He takes off. There, actually, there's four dogs in the kennel. The other two, I am dog sitting for my son and his wife while they're camping. Um, they don't know what to think of all this.
Okay, this concludes our our second series of um, getting things settled for winter time. And uh, gardens all put the rest, everything, the animals, everybody's done. And now uh, I can uh, go in and uh, start my other hobby now of sewing. I, I like to make quilts. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining me on this channel. I'm cold. We'll see ya. Goodbye. Thanks for taking time out to uh, watch this uh, uh, video on my fall preparation. So again, thank you and take care guys.